Consider, uh, agenda item 11 is consideration of approval of resolution number 758, approving the Clark County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. Chief Bigley. Good evening. This is a continuation of the plan presented in 2005. Every five years the plan is presented for formal adoption by every city. It is reviewed annually. Let me just read you a part of a letter that explains what this plan is about and why we seek the approval of the plan. The approval of this plan ensures Clark County continued eligibility for project grants under FEMA's hazard mitigation assistance programs, including hazard mitigation grant programs, pre-disaster mitigation and flood mitigation assistance grant programs. Approved mitigation plans are eligible to for points under the National Flood Insurance Program's Community Rating System. FEMA's approval of the Clark County Local Hazard Mitigation Plan is for a period of five years, effective affecting starting the date of, this, uh, of, of today. Clark County and all participating jurisdictions are required to review and revise the plan to reflect changes in development, progress at local mitigation efforts and changes in priorities, and resubmit it for approval in order to continue to be eligible for mitigation project grant funding. So essentially the plan is, is a continuation of our 2005 plan with, with some updates and does allow us to, to seek federal funding for mitigation efforts. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Chief. Any questions for Chief Higley? Seeing none, we'll seek a motion. Councilman Haven. Mayor, I move that we approve resolution number 758, approving the Clark County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call for a vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item 12 is consideration of approval of resolution number 759, resolution of the City of Mesquite adopting the 2012 local government records retention schedules as amended by the Nevada State Library and Archives. Ms. Lawson. Yes, good evening, Mayor and City Council. The Nevada State Library and Archives extensively reviewed and amended the 2012 local government records retention schedule and involve local jurisdictions, hospitals, and other entities affected by the records retention schedule to comment and or offer recommendations or amendments to the schedule. The state legislature approved the schedule and directed the library and archives <coughs> division to implement it statewide. The purpose of the local government records retention schedule is to ensure city records are filed, retained, and destroyed in accordance with state standards. A copy of the schedule of the schedules have been submitted to each city department for its review and comment as it will affect the handling of city records in each department. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. Any questions for Ms. Lawson? Okay. Seeing none, seek a motion. Councilman Gus Davidson. Thank you, Mayor. For my mic on. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve Resolution uh, 759, a resolution of the City of Mesquite adopting the 2012 Local Governmental Record Retention Schedules as amended by the Nevada State Library and Archives. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. Motion carries. Agenda item 13 is consideration of approval of a resolution of resolution number 760, revising the travel policy 7.1 of the city of Mesquite. Ms. Cardenas. Yes, thank you, Mayor, City Council. Uh, the city travel policy has not been updated since 2008. Uh, issues not addressed in the existing policy have been added in this revision. Uh, the changes were made to streamline the travel and training process, and they include um, only one form uh, being required. Uh, travel and training expenses will be paid up front. Per diem will be based on an IRS uh, website, which more accurately covers the cost of the city to which the employee is traveling. An incredible travel time has been defined and added to this policy. The process as it now stands requires that the employee fill out a white authorization form for an advance. 
When the travel and training is completed, the employee again submits an authorization form in yellow to request reimbursement. Uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It's confusing, it's inefficient. But this policy change will make the procedure more efficient. Employees will submit their travel authorization form uh, only once and all costs will be paid for up front. The travel authorization form shows the cost of the training registration, lodging if necessary, their mode of travel, whether they use a city <coughs> vehicle or justify a private vehicle. Uh, when using a private vehicle, the city will pay for the fuel using the IRS rate, which has now just been changed from 0 0.555 to 0 0.565, so you will need to make that change in your, um, the one you have in your packet right now. Um, and we also pay for per diem. We changed what we will pay for per diem now. Under this policy change, we will pay per diem using um, an IRS website, which we have inserted directly into the policy. The website shows the per diem cost based on the area or the city that the employee is traveling to. But the biggest change to the policy is the credible travel time, which was not addressed in the original policy. This policy will now define when travel time is eligible for reimbursement. We've tried to simplify it by adding a decision logic table in the policy to help us determine when it should be reimbursed. Uh, again, this will change the process so we handle the travel authorization form only once and the employee has all their costs paid for up front. If there is a need for reimbursement for any unforeseen expenses, all the employee will need to do is submit um, their receipt after it's approved by their department head. Um, they will not need to fill out another authorization form. Uh, and, and then another small change that we made in the policy is under uh, Section C, Item 6. Um, we changed that. The original intent was that, um, that we would pay for anything over 100 miles round trip. We had 100 miles written in there originally, so it was making it 200 miles round trip. So we changed that to 50 miles, which now uh, makes it a... Uh, 100 mile round trip uh, travel. Do you have any questions? Any questions from council? I do have one question. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. Ms. Ms. Cardenas, under 7.2.4 lodging, I, I know there were some questions when we started on a council about some trips that were taken where moderate lodging prices were not available. Um, is there any way for us to define based on geographic location? I know the IRS has some schedules out that defines what moderate lodging is in each one of those locations. They do, and it's in that website that we have submitted okay. into the policy manual. Okay, I'm just wondering if that shouldn't be, am I missing it? Because I don't see that listed here under lodging as referencing to that particular website. Are we okay with that? Um, we can add that. You want to add that website in this area as well? I, I would like to see it referenced there so okay. that we have a clear understanding of what moderate is. Okay, we can do that. Any other questions from council? Thoughts? Okay. We'll seek a motion then. Councilman Withelder. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I would like to make a motion that City Council approve I, uh, resolution number 760 revising the travel policy 7.1 of the City of Mesquite, <coughs> subject to all staff approvals and recommendations. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item 14 is consideration of approval of resolution number 762, establishing a policy for public requests for proclamations. Uh, Mr. Barton. Mr. Mayor, um, so our city clerk is going to do the staff report on this. She's the one who did the uh, research and, and worked this thing through conception to where it is right now. Uh, but just as a preface, during the course of the year, we get a lot of requests for proclamations uh, for all sorts of reasons, some of them commercial, some of them personal. Um, and we really felt that we needed to have a standardized means of being able to process these proclamations and, and honor the ones that we felt were appropriate. So uh, with that, I'd like to have uh, Terry Lawson uh, explain the uh, policy.
Thank you. The purpose of the policy is to establish policies, guidelines, and procedures for responding to public requests or proclamations. Policy it is the policy of the council to consider requests to proclaim certain events or causes when such proclamations positively affect, excuse me, impact the community and convey an affirmative message to the Mesquite residents. Proclamations that are political in nature, that are controversial, or that are likely would enjoy a high level of community interest and support are discouraged. Proclamations will not be issued for commercial purposes, such as opening of a new business, a new service, a new product, or a new professional service. This also includes business anniversaries that are less than 100 years old. Individuals or organizations seeking proclamations year after year must provide new information for the proclamation. Individuals or organizations who request the same proclamation year after year with only date changes would not be issued new proclamations. Only proclamations per year can be submitted by an individual or organizations for a specific cause or subject. The following guidelines and requirements apply to requests for consideration of proclamations. Number one, the persons making the request should be a Mesquite resident. Two, the request should be made four weeks in advance of a regularly scheduled city council meeting. Number three, a local citizen should agree to be in attendance to be a representative for the proclamation. Four, the city retains the right to modify, edit, or otherwise amend the proposed proclamation to meet its requirements, needs, or policy determinations. Number five, the city of Mesquite retains the right to decide if the proclamation will be placed on the city council agenda. Number six, the individual or organization must pick up the proclamation from the city clerk's office within five days of approval of the proclamation unless other arrangements are made. Under procedure, the persons making the request must submit an application, excuse me, must submit a completed application requesting a city proclamation and submit a copy of the proposed proclamation. A sample proclamation is attached to the application to provide uh, format suggestions. Proclamations are subject to the approval of the mayor, city manager, and or staff designee before they are placed on the city council agenda. Once approved, the proclamation will be added to the appropriate city council agenda. If not approved, the applicant will be notified of the decision and the reason for the decision. Do you have any uh, questions? Any questions for Ms. Lawson or Mr. Barton? Seeing none, we'll seek a motion. Councilman Littman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to make uh, a motion to approve resolution number 762, establishing a policy for public requests for proclamations. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Haven seconds. Um, call for the vote. Motion carries. 